who is this week's target in the manosphere. Taylor Swift, any woman wearing a crop top, and her cat. In many ways, Taylor Swift has had an amazing year, everything she touches becomes gold, and her ardent fans have even coined the term Swifties for themselves. Haters will hate. Though, after she looked amazing and wore a catsuit and a cat on the cover of Time magazine as their person of the year, a Christian manfluencer named Eric Kahn. It's shameful and sad that a hyper-promiscuous, childless woman, aging and alone with a cat, has become the heroine of a feminist age, reacted quickly to the article reclaiming biblical masculinity in a world of softness. As things can always get worse, I refuse to declare that the manosphere has peaked in 2023. But Andrew Tate would be the personification of the hostile, alienated, and triumphantly stupid age if time had a person of the year for the dark timeline, Swift's opposite. Individuals such as Tate and Khan, along with their countless millions of followers, don't struggle with contentment because they don't feel obligated to be unique. These teachings date back to the days of patriarchy. It is unnecessary to modify the term cat lady for today's spinsters, even though the younger feminist might now prefer a ferret. The underlying reasoning has not changed. A woman who asserts her autonomy is an affront to the natural order, and her punishment is to be rejected by society and die alone, never realizing her potential as a mother. To be honest, this tactic must have seemed a bit cyclical even in the beginning of time. The gender wars on social media have a primitivism to them, while Bible bros trash Swift. Other Manosphere soldiers troll TikTok and Instagram for pictures of young women having a good time, then condemn them as symbols of the collapse of civilization, society, or empire. The reasons behind the young women's destructive force are never fully explained, it could be anything from their skimpy attire to their inebriation to the fact that no men are pursuing them to their sheer audacity of having fun without consent. It's entertaining to watch how there are always enough feminists with the tenacity to step in and tear these moral guardians to pieces. Online sexist stereotypes are definitely becoming more basic and elemental. As Matt She's excellent BBC documentary from earlier this year details, Tate and his supporters discuss women as, ideally, a slave class rather freely. We are aware of its practical effects because teachers have reported 14-year-old radicalized students telling them to return to the kitchen. The Hope Not Hate survey, which revealed that only 1% of young women and 52% of young men had a positive opinion of Andrew Tate, indicates that it is a socially divisive topic. That's quite a divide, but don't worry, it's just sexism, as we are aware.